we should be recording now. Hello everyone, welcome to this week's episode of Techie Tuesdays. This is a pre-recorded video, and in this video we're going to be covering extracting IOCs from live malware that's ran in your environment. Um, this can either be with an actual malware sample that was caught by Sentinel-1 on a production um, endpoint, or if you're doing some threat testing on a virtual machine. Um, I will also touch on why certain types of malware don't run, but that's another video for another time. Um, if you know about anti-VM capabilities, we'll also be just touching on that for now, but I'll hopefully be doing a deep, deep dive video into anti-VM um, and like the full workflow for malware analysis. So um, I'm currently on a um, VLAN at the moment, and within this VLAN, I have a Windows 10 machine that is running Sentinel-1. Ignore the server type SQL, that was just um, that was just for the tags video. If you want to look at, go on to Techie Tuesdays and have a look, uh, our Techie Tuesdays pre-recordings and have a look at um, the tags. Um, that tags episode, that's where I cover how to use endpoint tags. Um, currently in the Win Dynamic Windows OS group. Um, I'm sure I've covered groups in one of the other Techie Tuesdays as well, so you can watch that as well. So let's go into our policy. Our policy is on Detect Detect. We've got all detection engines enabled. No threats are going to be automatically protected. Um, I have snapshots enabled for rollback in case I want to run ransomware. In this, I'm just going to do some Stealer, some Stealer um, malware. Um, I'm going to show you how to extract both the hash and um, like uh, C2 server IPs that you can put into star rules. Um, and deep visibility, everything is enabled. This is part of the complete license. This is all the telemetry data that you need for um, that, that Sentinel-1 uses to monitor absolutely everything that's happening on the endpoint. And you can just see the wide range of um, elements that can be detected. Um, and this is not just malicious, this is everything that's happening. Um, so yeah. So I'm gonna move on to my uh, Sentinel-1 demo machine. And you can see that I'm running Sentinel-1, it's overall secure. I'm going to malware bizarre. I'm just going to pick a some sort of stealer malware. Um, hopefully, there's no anti VM technologies running on it. Now, if you are testing out malware on a virtual machine and you wonder why sometimes the malware doesn't run, um, so there are features uh, like um, anti VM. So it's to basically prevent people like me from um, an analyzing the malware. Um, and then submitting IOCs and trying to get the uh, crypto stub uh, detected by detection engines. However, there are also features like mutex. So I, I don't know what the exact term for this is, but I know uh, obviously mutex is you don't want to have the same process running twice. So when you when you got the entry point of the malware and it runs through um, the initial functions of the main. Um, one of them will be anti-VM and then one of them will be mutex. So it will run through the anti-VM first and what it will do, it will check um, whether it's in the right CPU architecture, uh, what the CPU specs are, if it doesn't add up with the right CPU specs, how the clock works within that CPU. It might also um, do, like, do some shell code and um, return some system information. As you can see, it goes, it goes really, really far. However, with the mutex part it's almost like a network mutex so it some malware developers only want one map sample of malware that specific binary to be running once across all devices in the entire world um which means so say if a piece of malware were to, were to be downloaded by someone phishing email they run it um that um that process is now running on their machine and it's engraved themselves onto the um some scheduled tasks, for instance, that was going to stay on there. Um, it responds back to the C2 server saying, this is the only part, this is the only uh, binary we want running on this device, and we want to effectively build out more binaries for that rest of the enterprise, but we don't want it anywhere else because it could be like a sandbox or it could be people threat testing. Um, effectively, as, the, as soon as, a, as, soon as um, more, the same binary are detected connecting to... Um, same C2 server, but in a different area on a different machine that has got nothing to do with it, which is not on the same network as the other machine, uh, as the uh, 
infected machine before, um, it won't run. Um, there are ways to get around that, which we'll cover with patching, but I need to research that a bit more. So there are lots of anti-VM capabilities that are in most pieces of malware. Um, competent malware developers will add them. Um, however, stuff like Redline Stealer, we'll probably be using that today. Um, I know Redline doesn't have Redline doesn't have a whole lot of anti-VM things enabled. However, the source code is public, which inevitably means people have added their own anti-VM capabilities here and there. But as you can see, you can't see anything. Um, you just simply have to try it out. Um, so let's let's have a look. Um, we've got a clipper malware here. That's interesting. I haven't got any like um, I haven't got any fake um, I haven't got any fake crypto wallets on this VM. So um, for now, we'll just do Redline. Let's download this. So make sure you are running in a VM. Um, I've had people tell me that they were threat testing on their main machine. I'm gonna have to tell them off. So yeah, this is for DC. And that's strange, it has not got a VAC. So let's drag and drop this first. I'm not gonna run it straight out of the archiver. Um, just because I want the Sentinel-1 static engine to kick in first, and you'll, you'll likely see a cloud protection um, infected. Is that a, straight away it's detected? Um, I'm sure that's because it's a file hash. It's going back into incidents, on threats, on right static AI, um, and it's okay. So this is not. This wasn't submitted to the Sentinel-1 cloud as a malicious uh, file hash, but because it's just been detected as malicious, um, it's been appended to the blacklist automatically, if I'm correct. Let's quickly get the onto threat details. And if not, um, I'll quickly cover that now. Um, so you can see the threat indicators. Majority of the sections is P, uh, portable executable, have high entropy, ton of obfuscation or packing. So if you were to reverse engineer it, you'd see just a massive wad of encrypted um, encrypted in either AES or ZOR. Um, this binary imports functions, the raise kernel exceptions. Um, if you were to put, if you know about reverse engineering um, .NET application, which is what Redline is written in, you're able to see in DNSPY, it imports um, kernel 32 uh, DLL. Um, imports de de debugger functions as well. So let's grab this char one and go into Sentinels, go into blacklist, and let's see if we can find this specific hash. And you can, yeah, so this is it. This is the one that was automatically appended to the um, automatically appended to uh, the blacklist by Sentinel One. So this is, isn't something that you have to do. You won't have to you won't have to add the file hash yourself to the blacklist. This is now part of the Sentinel One blacklist, and this applies to um, other tenants as well. So you're helping out everyone who is a Sentinel One customer with uh, testing out malware like this. Um, which means the next time this is run on someone's machine, um, the Sentinel One cloud detection engine is a lot faster than, let's say, the behavior engine, because that requires like hooking into um, an API. Um, so let's open up the threat again, and you can see virus. Uh, th this is not something that I want to cover in the video, but you can see it's been sandboxed in virus total, and it's one hundred percent malicious. So let's run it. You know, that's the smart thing to do with malware is to run it. Um, obviously, I'm joking. Grouped by hash, let's ungroup it because I want to. I just want to decompose this, and it looks like it looks like this initially is the malware crypto. So I'm not sure what crypto this is. I still need to. 
um, to figure out how to identify cryptos. I'm sure if we go on to virus total, it might tell us in one of the might tell us somewhere. Um, usually with Yara rules. Um, okay, um, let's go into community here and Okay, so I'm actually going to go back into um, Mauer Bazaar. I want to quickly highlight this specific piece of red line. So which one was it again? Just grab this hash. Browse. I'm not too sure about the search. Thing. Okay, there you go. Sha five, Sha two five six, Sha two five six. Um, and if you have any questions about what I'm doing, about Sentinel One, about malware, um, about malware analysis, reverse engineering, you can contact me directly. Um, my LinkedIn is in the description. Um, you just message me on there any time of the day. Um, and then um, if you're looking to actually get Sentinel-1 in your environment or you want to go through a POC, you want to see a demo, um, we can get you set up if you email us at info at um, and yeah, so let's go into this. So Mal Bazaar is a brilliant service. Um, let's go into Smoke loader. Okay, so you can already see. Um, hold on. Yeah, so it uses it's probably smoke loader. Integer is saying smoke loader. So this. Um, so obviously, Sentinel One has detected it as malicious using these um, P using high entropy and stuff, but because obviously the detection engines are proprietary, there are likely rules already set in place that detect smoke loader. Um, and the reason why smoke, like there are malware cryptos that get detected so easily is usually because of greedy malware developers. Um, they usually like to sell to as many people as possible, which obviously security researchers like me get their hands on eventually, not by directly paying them, of course, but when they're spotted in the wild, they again garner enough attention and then everything gets detected um that's why you can see in virus total was 29 detections by um and then a bunch of them are by rules so this this is what happens when malware developers get greedy but that's that's another point for another, uh, another day so let's go into threat details here and i want to see if we can extract those iocs from um dynamic detections so let's go into from overview into explore and we're going to go into storyline. This is part of the complete licensing as well as it links into deep visibility. Um, I'm only interested in the network actions here. This is uh, it's using word vault. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do who is. Um, oops. I'm going to go look up this IP. And seems to be some sort of um, Microsoft hosting. It could be like OneDrive used as a C2 server. But we know for a fact that this is malicious. Um, this IP is being used to um, host the red line stealer. So let's clear this filter. And there's not a lot of behavioral indicators on here specifically. Um, yeah, it seems like, yeah, so obviously it sends someone cloud detected it's malicious, um, it's because it's Reddit in memory, um, 
I'll, I think I'll make an entire video on how malware cryptos work and how to actually detect them and how detection engines work. Um, so let's move into the usability and let's create a new custom rule with this IP. I'm going to play, press new rule, um, red line. Um, C2 IMC uh, and description for Tempe Tuesdays, but permanent rule severity critical next. Um, I believe it was destination IP. Let's double check that. It's going to explore destination yep destination IP um, contains and oops let's put it in the line below and that is a correct uh, query um, so if you want to type this query into deep visibility it would show you that this specific network connection um, you go into next then you can treat as a threat or you can even do network quarantine. Um, this is up to you. If you're, if you're, if it's an extremely sensitive machine and you want zero data being leaked, if you don't have a DLP uh, solution already in place, network quarantine is something that I'd recommend, but I'm going to treat it as a threat. Um, the suspicious threat policy, I don't, I just, I'm still undetectable the suspicious threat policy. Um, activate rule immediately after saving activate and that rule is now created so um, that is how to create um, deep visibility rules stop star, star custom rules um, let's uh, close that so you can see um, red line c2 IOC critical um, free as suspicious that's how to create uh, or how to extract IOCs from malware and create rules based on top of them. So if you enjoyed this week's episode of Techie Tuesdays, um, give the video a like, subscribe to us, um, and thank you very much for watching.